Welcome back to Lab 10 in Conservation of Mechanical Energy. In Part 2, we will be holding a meter stick at this end, have it sweep through like so, and measure the velocity at the end of the meter stick using a photo gate. Uh, now do note, I drew this picture like it is on purpose. This meter stick is not sweeping through one meter, but instead it is only sweeping through half a meter. So no, we aren't going to measure the initial and final height. We are simply choosing it to be so. So be sure you get as close to the end as possible and you hold the meter stick level when, when setting it up. And when we move on to our energy statement, it's slightly different since the meter stick is not moving as a whole, but simply rotating around an axis. We are going to be adding the angular kinetic energy to both sides of this statement. Uh, the angular kinetic energy is one half I, it stands for moment of inertia, omega squared, and omega is the angular velocity. So not too different to what we've seen with one half mv squared, the translational kinetic en energy. Uh, but there is one complication. The moment of inertia has different values depending on the object and at what point it's rotating around. For the end of a meter stick, that is to say the axis is at the end of a rod, the moment of inertia is one-third times mass times the length of the rod squared. So not too terrible, seeing as the length is one. So when we set up the energy statement again, much like the last part, it's the initial potential energy equaling the final angular kinetic energy and the rest of these terms, the translational and angular initial kinetic energies and the final potential energy and the final translational kinetic energy being zero. We simply rearrange to solve for the final angular velocity at the end of the rod, of course, the meter stick. And the conservation statement rearranges like so. And if it's not clear, I'll rewrite this there. So once again, we have a square root, a constant gravity, the initial height. It's very similar. Uh, be sure you compare what you predict with other groups, as once again, we are expecting the predicted values for the velocity at the end of the stick to be very close to the actual speed of the meter stick, the velocity I should say. And if you were quick, you, you caught what I said, we are predicting the velocity at the end of the meter stick and this is the angular velocity. The 
angular velocity, uh, you should have or know a way to convert our predicted angular velocity to just plain old velocity at the end of the meter stick and compare to your actual value. So now that we have our prediction out of the way, we can find the uncertainty in our measurements. And oh, I can keep going all I want. There's nothing there. Yeah, that's right. There's only one source of uncertainty, one true measurement. Because remember, you are choosing the initial and final heights and you are going to hold the meter stick steady and level at the initial position. So the only actual measurement, the big place of error, is going to be in your measured velocity from the photogate.